welcome to the last lecture in the series of diuretics. We are going to end this series with acetazolamide, the representative medication for carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Acetazolamide and other carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are categorized in the class of diuretics. However, these medications are usually used for other purposes due to their less efficacy in producing diuresis. Acetazolamide inhibits the action of carbonic anhydrase, leading to excretion of sodium, bicarbonate, and chloride. Subsequently, carbonic acid accumulates in the blood and the blood pH level decreases. Bicarbonate accumulates in the urine and so increasing urine pH. The therapeutic effects follow as blood pressure drops, intracranial pressure drops, intraarcular pressure drops, and blood pH drops. FDA-approved indications for acetazolamide include glaucoma, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, congestive heart failure, altitude sickness, periodic paralysis, and epilepsy. Fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain are the most commonly reported adverse effects. Some patients can experience paresthesia and taste alteration. Central nervous toxicity includes fatigue, drowsiness, lethargy, and confusion. These adverse effects can be improved after discontinuing medication. Patients should be taught on symptoms and signs of central nervous toxicity. Metabolic acidosis is another adverse effect. This adverse effect can lead to respiratory compensation, and this compensation makes acetazolamide a medication for preventing mountain sickness. Acetazolamide is contraindicated in patients with liver cirrhosis and advanced liver function impairment, kidney function impairment, as well as metabolic acidosis and electrolyte imbalances. Drug allergies to medications in this group or to sulfonamide is another contraindication for using acetazolamide. Acetazolamide, based on previous FDA regulation, is a Category C drug. Animal studies showed teratogenic effect. So acetazolamide can only be used during pregnancy if absolutely needed and the benefit has to outweigh the risk. Acetazolamide does not directly affect changes in ECG, but it is advisable for using it with caution on patients with prolonged QT interval because acetazolamide can cause hypokalemia. Patient education is very important when it comes to taking medication at home. Patient education should include side effects, how to prevent side effects, and report to the physician if experiencing adverse effects. When this medication can be taken with or without food, we will teach the patient to take this medication with food to prevent GI irritation. Safety measures should be taught, such as do not operating machinery or driving until the adverse effects are learned and become predictable. Female client should be taught on possible teratogenic effect. They should notify physician once pregnant. Teach the client to call 911 if experiencing symptoms of heart attack. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor could deplete potassium. We need to monitor potassium level and kidney function. Being a diuretic, acetazolamide can potentially lead to electrolyte imbalances. Elderly clients are more susceptible to fluid and electrolyte imbalances. We need to monitor their fluid and electrolyte status more closely. As the urine pH is increased by acetazolamide, clearance of amphetamines is decreased. In addition, acetazolamide can decrease the clearance of phenytoin, primadone, and quinidine, leading to toxicity of these medications. Acetazolamide can also increase risk of salicylate toxicity. When patient uses acetazolamide and lithium together, there is a risk for decreasing effect of lithium because acetazolamide can promote clearance of lithium. Using acetazolamide and sodium bicarbonate together can increase risk of kidney stone. Thank you for spending time with me. 
I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.